Right now on ABC 10 News at 4 o'clock, San Diegans raring to go on the first day of vaccine eligibility for everyone 16 and older. Legoland is back open for the first time in more than a year. The changes you can expect if you go. And Derek Chauvin makes a big announcement as he addresses the court for the first time. ABC 10 News at 4 starts now. Vaccine eligibility is now open to all Californians 16 and older. Good afternoon, I'm Kimberly Hunt. Today's expansion means millions are now trying to secure appointment spots already in high demand. ABC 10 News reporter Jennifer De La Cruz shows us who was first in line this morning. After four months of patiently waiting their turn, all adults in California can now get a vaccine. Yeah, I'm super excited. Really excited. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm really happy. With initial doses going to essential workers and those with underlying condition, millions of Californians 16 and up were left out of the equation until now. I'm the last person in my bubble to get the vaccine, so I'm really excited to get on board and be able to see a few people again. At the Sharp vaccine station in Grossmont, some people made appointments as recently as last night. 18 year old Kylie Schultz says she made sure to set it up early. I got the first appointment, so my mom and I came super early to make sure that I got in without a big line. My mom wanted to come with me. She's like, it's a historical day. I have to be there. Mary Becker got her second shot today. I thought I was going to be in a long line, but you know, I was genuinely surprised by how quick this was. I'm really excited because that means my younger sister actually qualifies now so she can be immunized as well. Patients we spoke to were happy to get one step closer to normal and encourage others to do the same. I am looking forward to going back to restaurants. Honestly, I haven't been to one since March of last year. Get it done. You want to be able to live your life as normally as possible and you want to protect the people around you. Jennifer Dela Cruz, ABC 10 News. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is not being administered after being paused by the FDA. We have links to pharmacy sites where you can make an appointment for Pfizer or Moderna on 10news.com. And Legoland is finally back open to the general public. The park reopened today after being closed for more than a year. ABC 10 News reporter Nate Holmes looks at what you can expect on your next visit. It's been a long 13 months and employees are just as excited as guests to be back at the park and they are doing all they can to give them a fun experience while also keeping them safe. Three, two, one. It's the moment the switch was turned on after months of being shut off to the public. Really great day for us to open. Legoland California has a lot of fun activities waiting for the young guests. Their visit can start with an overnight stay at one of the park's hotels. We're in the Legoland Castle Hotel. This is one of two hotels here on property. Our Legoland Castle Hotel has more than 3,000 Lego models made out of more than 3 million Lego bricks. Inside the gates, it's an interactive, hands-on theme experience. One more time. All rides are open at the park and you may notice that no one may be sitting in front of you. That's just one of the things that the park is doing to keep folks safe. Mask and temperature checks are required. Hand sanitizing stations have been placed around the park and guests can only use debit or credit for their purchases. We've had two weeks of park preview days to really test our new protocols. Families can also float through the Sea Life Aquarium. Animals that you'd see in our local California coast to touch pool animals that you'd see in our local rock pools and even some tropical fish. We have some amazing spotted eagle rays, stingrays. There's a large grouper down here hanging out with us. Park officials are excited not only to have guests back, but to see their fun loving employees once again. <laughs> Closure has a big impact on on the local area. So for us to be able to bring hundreds of people back to work is a really important step for us. It is an awesome day and just keep in mind as part of the new safety protocols, guests will need reservations or pre booked tickets before they can come into the park. Nate Holmes, ABC 10 News.
Speaking of theme parks, tickets are now on sale for Disneyland and California Adventure. Capacity is limited, so you must do both. Buy a ticket and make a reservation for the date you want. People who already had unused tickets have had access to the system since Monday, but now it's open to everyone. The two parks in Anaheim will reopen on April 30th. You can stay on top of any new developments with coronavirus by downloading the 10 News app. A free version is available in the App Store. President Biden is imposing sweeping new sanctions on Russia. They come in response to Moscow's interference in the 2020 election, the solar wind cyber attack, and Russia's ongoing occupation in Crimea. The sanctions target 32 entities and officials. Ten diplomats are being expelled from the U.S. Biden says he spoke to Russian President Vladimir Putin earlier this week. And I was candid, respectful conversation was candid and respectful. Two great powers with significant responsibility for global stability. And President Putin and I have had a significant responsibility to steward that relationship. Biden is suggesting that he and Putin hold a summit somewhere outside the U.S. and Russia later this year. The defense has rested its case in the trial of the officer accused of murdering George Floyd. The defense took only two days to present testimony after the prosecution took two weeks. And as Court TV's Chanley Painter reports, Derek Chauvin decided not to take the stand. All the evidence is in in the trial of Derek Chauvin in the death of George Floyd. Today, Chauvin addressed the court for the first time since the start of the murder trial and answered the lingering question of whether or not he would testify in his own defense. Mr. Nelson makes a lot of the decisions in trial, but one he cannot make for you is whether or not you testify. And he can give you advice and you can take that advice or reject that advice. But the decision ultimately has to be yours and not his. Uh, is this your decision not to testify? It is, Your Honor. All right. Earlier today, prosecutors notified the court that they plan to call a rebuttal witness and introduce newly discovered evidence in the case. The state wanted to present carbon monoxide testing results in light of the testimony of the defense expert, Dr. David Fowler. The defense argued that the state had ample time to bring that evidence forward and ultimately Judge Peter Cahill decided not to allow in any evidence or testimony from Dr. Martin Tobin about that test on carbon monoxide in the body. Closing arguments will be on Monday morning before the jury will be sequestered during deliberations in this case. We'll continue to keep you updated from here in downtown Minneapolis. This is Chanley Painter with Court TV. The two men accused in the murder of Kristen Smart back in 1996 made their first court appearance today. Paul Flores is charged with first degree murder. Prosecutors say he killed Smart in his dorm room at Cal Poly as he tried to rape her. His father Ruben is charged as an accessory for allegedly helping hide the body. Their arraignments and bail hearings will be held Monday. And the woman who was with a man killed in a standoff with San Diego police this week has been arrested. Christopher Marquez was shot and killed inside a dumpster Monday on the San Diego High School campus. Police say Marquez was involved in shootouts with officers and bounty hunters in the weeks prior. Jeanette Iriarte was in the car with Marquez during the pursuit that preceded the standoff, which included police being shot at. She's facing multiple charges, including vehicle theft. Checking the news feed, a big announcement from the Biden administration today involving Russia, the U.S. expelling nearly a dozen diplomats and adding sanctions in the wake of election interference and a major hack. Russia condemned the move and warned there could be retaliation. A positive sign for the economy. The number of people filing for unemployment fell to 576,000 last week. This comes as employers added nearly a million jobs last month. Stimulus checks seem to have paid for the retail industry. The Commerce Department reporting retail sales jumped nearly 10% last month. Experts also point to vaccinations and fewer restrictions for the sales boost.